Warhammer 40,000 is the most popular tabletop miniature wargame in the world. Its first edition was released in September 1987. Now while we are currently on the 9th edition of the game, meaning the rules have been refined, the world, characters and the lore have been massively expanded on, this also means that getting into the game now can be an extremely daunting experience. But it doesn't need to be. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you will have a good enough understanding of the game and the world that you'll be ready to purchase your first models, build your army and start collecting and playing. Prepare to plunge headfirst into the grim darkness of the far future. Now before we get too far into this, I want to point out that this video won't fully cover the rules of the game. It is not a specific how to play video, more of a how to get into the hobby and where to start sort of video. So, what is the setting of the world that the game is played in? It's the 41st millennium. In every star system and on every planet, there is only war. There are war leaders calling on the power of the dark gods of chaos, alien tyrants leading rampaging raids aimed at tearing down humanity. Against this evil stand the armies of the Imperium, elite space marines, battle sisters and countless other factions of mighty warriors. They are all willing to give their life for the God Emperor who sits upon the Golden Throne of Terra. Now this is as brief of an introduction as I can give to the universe of 40k. Its lore is vast and deep, and awesome. Now to play the game, you get to pick a faction and take them into battle yourself. You can fight for the ruthless Imperium of Man, the demon worshippers of chaos, or even one of the other alien races that are looking to build their own empires amidst the stars. Whatever faction you pick, there are many ways to get involved in 40k. Some people like to collect, others enjoy painting their favourite models, collecting just the ones they think look the coolest. I have many friends that are just involved in the game in this way, but for most the appeal is creating a powerful tabletop army to use in games against your friends or in tournaments. Whichever is the most appealing part to you, there is no wrong way to enjoy Warhammer 40,000. Now the reason I am making this video is actually because this is something I went through recently myself. I have always liked the look of the 40k designs, the world, the characters, the darkness of it all always appealed to me. But just like you guys, I found it a daunting thought. Where do I start? Now I decided to just dive into it 100%, I bought a load of codex books, a load of novels, I watched hours and hours of lore videos, I read the rule books and started building an army. Now I have an incredible hobby to enjoy and I am just sad that I did not get into it sooner. I really hope that by making this video I can get more of you into the hobby as well. So where is the best place to start? Well to make this easy I'm actually going to split this into four sections. Playing, collecting, painting and lore. If you're only interested in one of these you can skip to the relevant part of the video. If they all appeal to you then just watch it all the way through. Now as I'm assuming most of you are here because you want to play the game we will start there. 40k is without a doubt one of the best tabletop games in the world. Now on its 9th edition, both the rules to the game and the universe is set in have had more than 30 years of development. Despite this, it's pretty easy to pick up and play, but it can be as complicated as you want to make it. There is certainly a lifetime worth of depth that you can attempt to master, which for me is part of the appeal. But if you want to just learn the basics and play some games for fun, you will pick it up in no time at all. So what does a game actually look like? What happens? Well, in its most basic form, two players set their armies against each other and then play through a series of turns. One player will move, shoot, fight and more with their models and then the other player will do the same. This continues until one is victorious. There is no set game size, some can take less than an hour to play depending on the space and the amount of models you have. You could even play full blown wars that take days to play. This isn't really something I would recommend, but it is an option. Some games have set objectives or missions that a player must complete. Other games are as simple as wipe out the other player's army. But more often than not, you'll be attempting to assassinate key enemy leaders, seize battlefield objectives and loads more of other awesome scenarios. Now to allow you to perfectly tailor your experience, there are three ways to play. Now these three options are extremely vague, but within them you'll find loads of different playstyles to try out. 
There is open play, which is an extremely unrestricted form of play. There is narrative play, which tells stories through the game as you play it. And then there is matched play, which is the most competitive version of the game. We will look into each of these in more detail now. Open play is intended to allow players to have as much freedom as possible when playing, stripping away much of the framework that typically guides narrative and matched play. It essentially uses the main game rules with no additional scenario, mission, victory conditions, or mechanics. Now the possibilities for this type of play are pretty much endless. It may be as simple as both players bring their armies to the table and see who wins. You may have one player essentially play a wave survival type game, where one player keeps bringing their units back onto the table and seeing how many turns a player can survive. Then swap to see who can use the best tactics to survive the longest. These are of course just random examples, but you get the point. Play the game however you want, using the base rules and stats as your guide. Narrative play is a way of following the story of both your army and its battles. That could be made as simple as coming up with names for your models and units and tracking their kills, maybe giving them a promotion going into their next battle. But to be honest, the best way to play a narrative game is by collecting a crusade army. Playing a crusade army turns your army into a force that develops with every battle they participate in. Each victory or defeat sees them develop their own personalities, skills or even wounds. Every unit in your army has its own record card, which is used to record its name, equipment, combat achievements, experience points and more. As they gain XP they can acquire new abilities and equipment to use in future battles. Think of this as a version of the game as closer to a D&D campaign or any RPG video game that you may have played. This is a great way to play the game if you have a regular gaming group, with all of you collecting a crusade army forging your own narratives. Like I said, crusades are not the only way to play narrative play, you could just sit down with your friends for 10 minutes before you start playing to come up with a cool scenario in which your armies are engaged in. Or you could approach the scenarios from the narrative play mission packs. These are just as fun. I'm assuming you get the idea of what this type of game involves by now, it's my personal favourite way to play. Finally we have matched play. This is the most common game type seen at tournaments and other gaming clubs. It uses the rules to ensure that no matter what faction a player is using, they are evenly matched and the result is purely down to strategy, tactics and skill. In a matched play game, players will agree on the size of the battle they are playing. This is worked out using a points value system. Each individual model is worth a different amount of points, usually the more the points it is worth, the more value it has to your army, meaning its stats are usually much better. Players build their armies using a selection of data sheets and equipment lists to record their choices. They can either stockpile a wealth of command points by picking their force within the restrictions of a single detachment, or expand some of their strategic resources to spread their forces across multiple specialised formations. Any remaining command points can actually be used throughout the game, but this isn't a rules video so we'll leave that for another time. If you're looking for a fair yet tactical challenge, this is the game type for you. Now that we've covered the game types, let's talk about what you will need to play. First off, and without a doubt the most important, the core rulebook. If you want to get into any aspect of the game itself, or you want to just get into the lore and read the novels, I would still recommend the core rulebook. It has pages and pages of information about the world and different factions, and to really understand what's going on, you have to have a rulebook. Even if you never play an actual game of it in your life, the core book is a great purchase. Next, you will need somewhere to play. You could use a custom gaming table with sweet terrain and scenery for your models to use, or you could just use your kitchen table with some random household objects on it for your models to use as cover. Even if you don't have a free table, you can use the floor. All you need is a bit of space big enough for the scale of the game you want to play. You will need some sort of ruler or tape measure to measure distances. This is used for moving and shooting. You will also need some six-sided dice, also referred to as D6. Dice are used to see if shots hit their targets, or if a character armour protects him, and way more things. There are plenty of other accessories and extras that you can use if you want, but the rest is completely optional. You might want some specialist dice, or cards that list your army's powers, or, and this is just an extra that I would recommend, the codex for your army. What is a codex you ask? A codex is an indispensable guidebook and rule resource for each of the individual Warhammer factions. These are great for both the game and fans of the lore. Now that we have covered the basics of getting into the game, let's talk about collecting. The good news is, there is no one that can tell you how to collect Warhammer 40,000 models. You might want to mix and match different factions to create a custom army, 
or you may want to build the biggest Space Marine army you can, with a good mix of Marines, vehicles, huge tanks and more. Some people just collect what looks coolest. Some just collect the bigger models. Many people just enjoy making really cool displays. Collecting is a very personal experience and no video on YouTube can really tell you how to do it. Just enjoy the experience. From the first time you pick up a new 40k model and prepare to assemble it, you will realize that this, in itself, is a very delicate and satisfying hobby that has an extremely creative element to it. It is a methodical and relaxing experience, assembling your model and painting it in whatever way you see fit. As your skills improve, you will find yourself trying to challenge yourself to more difficult and intricate models, and maybe taking on bigger, more time-consuming kits like tanks or other vehicles of war. Assembly is only a part of the fun. Choosing a colour scheme and applying it to your army is beyond satisfying. And it's a truly artful skill, one that takes a lot of practice. But as I said, it's a very relaxing and therapeutic experience. There are tons of tutorials for painting out there if you need some useful tips to get you started. I believe there are loads of tutorials on the official Warhammer channel, but there's also a bunch of great channels out there that produce insanely detailed tutorials, so check them out as well. Finally, we have lore. Now, as I said at the start, 40k has been around for over 30 years, meaning it has had a bunch of writers develop a huge backstory for the universe of 40k. This began in 1987 when Games Workshop asked writer Scott Rowan to write a series of tie-in novels. This eventually led to the creation of Black Library, which is literally a full publishing company owned by Games Workshop. There are so many books. Some are good, some not so good but some are literally phenomenal. I was actually recommended to begin my 40k reading journey with a series of books called the Horus Heresy series, and while I absolutely agree with this, I chose to read the Core Rulebook and the Space Marine Codex first, which I'll be honest, I think was a good idea. So for my reading recommendation, I would say get the Core Rulebook and any specific Codex books that interest you, and then start with the Horus Heresy series, beginning with Horus Rising. I truly cannot recommend those books enough. Now, aside from the novels, there are also graphic novels, an animated movie called Ultramarines, which, in all honesty, sucks, and now on their exclusive subscription service platform, Warhammer Plus, they are producing short animated episodes, which are pretty cool. There is also a ton of Warhammer 40k games, which again, range from excellent to awful. If you're a casual video gamer, I would recommend the game titled Space Marine, although it is a little dated now. And if you enjoy a more in-depth tactical video game that is full of 40k lore, I would recommend the first two Dawn of War games, but again, they are quite old. Okay, I think that's enough lore content to keep you guys going over the next few years, maybe even decades. On a side note, would you like to see us cover 40k lore videos on this channel? We know that this channel is specifically a tabletop gaming channel, but as these videos would essentially be backstories for the 40k tabletop game, we think it could be a nice extra to go along with our gameplay videos. Let us know if you'd be interested in that in the comments. We'll be sure to get out some more 40k videos soon if you guys enjoyed this one. Again, let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. So my final thoughts are, if you're looking to get into 40k in any way, then my first recommendation would be to get the core rulebook, read through that, see if it's the sort of thing that fits your interests. Then, my next recommendation would be to have a look at Warhammer Plus. This is brand new and literally launched less than a month ago, but it's Warhammer's official sort of Netflix subscription service where they upload all kinds of great things from lore videos, original animated shows, painting tutorials, and loads more. So definitely check that out if you want to get involved. I really hope that after watching this video, you're compelled to dip your toes into the 40k universe in one way or another. Let me know what you guys decide to do in the comments. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time on the Tabletop Alliance.